Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. I am very grateful that I'm able to feature such a wide spectrum of amazing guests on my show who inspire all of us to strive in reaching a higher standard for ourselves. And I want to thank you for tuning in today. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is the general manager of the very prestigious Hokua Kondo, and he was honored in 2015 as the top condo general manager in the world. He is Dwayne Komine, and today we are going beyond condos. Dwayne, <laughs> how's everything? Good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me for number 47. Congratulations. Yeah. You know, yeah, you're my 47th guest. This is my 47th episode. Great. Now, Dwayne, I know you for many years, but I want you to tell, tell me about your youth. My youth, um, I grew up in Hawaii Kai. I went to Cocoa Head Elementary. Then I went to New Valley, and then I went to Kaiser High School. And from there... I did no college, and then I started my career. But did you, did you play any uh, sports or do any other activities? Yes, I did. I played sports. It was short-lived, but I did play sports. <laughs> and, of course, um, I am what I do today. Yeah. And, Dwayne, your family, I know your family, and your wife, Leona, and your three daughters. Can you tell, tell me about them? Yeah, I have three daughters. Um, I have my wife, Leona, Simone. Asia and Janae, and I have three granddaughters, one in the oven. Ah. So I got six girls in the house. And what did uh, Leona win some years ago? She won Mrs. Hawaii USA. No, excuse me, Miss Hawaii. Yeah. Yes. And does that Mrs. make Mrs. Hawaii, yes. Does that make you Mr. Hawaii? Somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't turn around when people call me that. <laughs> Dwayne, I want to ask you this because I have no idea. Um, what was your first job that you ever had that you got paid money for? Uh, interesting. I was a newspaper boy. I had approximately over three, four hundred papers to deliver in a day. And I realized delivering four hundred papers in a day, three hours a day, was not cutting it for me. So I decided to hire friends that were close acquaintances and I would pay them. I mean, not that much, but I'd buy them a plate lunch at lunchtime, yeah. so they didn't have to eat cafeteria food, so we were able to um, deliver that many papers, and of course that led me to winning the Newspaper Boy of the Year Award, which wow, that's a lot of suit, you know. I had no idea. So you were you had your bu you had a business going on back then. Uh, yes. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Well, so Dwayne, I want to ask you this too. I know that your uh, your passion, you have a passion of playing drums. When did you start playing drums first? Well, that's interesting. When I, was, when I first started playing drums was, of course, I started playing on the table at, in my classroom. I think it was a fourth grade. <laughs> you had the wooden tables, yeah. and you'd do this. And, and eventually, the teacher would just yell at me and say, knock it off. <laughs> so I, I, I elevated to pots and pans at my mom's house, at home. And of course, I used the wooden sticks, and I broke those wooden sticks, of course, needed to say they weren't very happy, but <laughs> I started at a young age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do you like playing drums so much, and then which performers have you performed with? I like playing drums because, mainly because my father wanted me to play the violin. I don't see the crossover there. <laughs> so um, I performed with, uh, more recently was with Roland Casimiro yeah. for over 25 years. I performed with Frank DeLima. I performed with Danny Couch. Um, Rick Wood, many others. Wow, that's legendary. Yeah. So over 30 years. Yes. Wow. Dwayne, and then you started getting into working at condos. Is it true that you were a janitor? Yes. Really? Uh, I was a janitor at a, at a building called Crystal Park where the old stadium was. I came into that position because my brother had offered me, because he was in property management. So I was actually... Um, I wasn't doing nothing in the daytime because I played music at night, so I had no problem with working in the daytime as a janitor. And 
And of course, my funny friends would pass by every morning and throw things in the yard and then, you know, make sure that I would sweep it up, you know? <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, and now you're the legendary general manager of the Hokua condo, and we just showed some pictures about the footprint that, you know, the Hokua building is currently at, and then how beautiful that building is. But yeah. after you were a janitor, was it true that, you know, friends would, like, make, make trouble with you? Oh, you yeah, they, they continue to come by and throw <laughs> rubbish and... <laughs> Their food, their lunch bags, um, and they'd always, you know, laugh as they drove away. Of course, I wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> That's so <But> mean. <laughs> I remember them today. <laughs> yeah. So after that first job working at that condo, where did you go after that? Well, I kind of liked the business, so I, I applied. My brother got me to apply at uh, the Equoy Tower. Okay. From there, I worked on a hands-on resident manager, meaning that I worked in the yard, I worked with the employees, and then from that point, I really liked what I was doing and playing music. I decided to enhance my education, so from that point, I went to Rural Capital Plaza, yeah. which it was the first condominium in the Kakako District and under the HCDA ruling. So from Rural Capital Plaza, I was asked to go to Nauru Tower, which was run by Nauru Phosphates Royalties Development. And from that point, I was recruited by Kobayashi McNaughton Group to open up Okua. Wow. You, you've really went through a lot of places. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's so amazing how you started as a janitor, being, and then now you're the general manager of the, one of the most prestigious buildings in Hawaii. And you're part of the Institute of Real Estate Management. Correct. And that's a great organization. I remember a few months ago, I was a uh, guest speaker for them. Tell me about that, that organization. That's a, a well-organized, it's an organization where education and just, just getting facts and learning about your career. I started about 30 years ago, and the class or the organization had about 15 students. Yeah. And I became... The president, and when I left a couple of years later, I left with about 300 membership. Wow. But it increased, you know, for the certification that's it's known nationally. And what is ARM, A-R-M? Accredited Residential Manager. And again, it's, a, it's nationally recognized. And most people in, in the industry prefer an ARM that they would like to hire or interview. Yeah. And, Dwayne, let's talk about Hokua again now. Um, when you became general manager, I mean, obviously they, they had McNaughton and Kobayashi. They wanted that vision of being the, the top of the, the highest standard of luxury living. Tell me about that situation in the beginning. Well, the, when I got hired by the Kobayashi McNaughton team, it was very trying. I had to put condo living and resort style living together. And I knew a lot about condominiums, but not much in the resort style living. Anyway, I went to many uh, resorts to bring back home. And think, mind you now, I had a little book and a, a little phone by myself. There was nothing. And I went searching. And I found a, a perfect partner, which he would have represented the hotel side, been in the business for a long time as well. And we merged together. And I was able to bring the condo and the resort and we brought it together almost by accident, and we created that lifestyle. Yeah, and, you know, because you, you guys, I mean, you, I mean they, they might have had the vision, but you're the one that has, has to execute it. Now, at that time, that was the highest standard of condo resort living, and right now, some of these newer condos are really emulating what you have done at Hokua. How does that make you feel? Well, that's great, but we'll always be remembered as the benchmark of Kakaako. The Kobayashi McNaughton Group has changed the face of Kakaako. We have brought the bar, the bench high, so other expectations. So, of course, it's a challenging for us because we um, continue to strive to be number one, and so far our, our uh, property values reflect that. Yeah, and I know that you love your team, you know, that... that you have, and you have great empathy for them. But I want to know, Dwayne, what is your team culture like? 
Well, so my team culture, first of all, I have a retention of almost 95% That's from huge. nearly 13 years, original employees, and they continue to work at Hokua. I created an environment where I'm not the boss, you know, I'm just their friend. Yeah. And normally when I discipline or we have to be, they have to be disciplined, they feel more bad about what they did than I do, and it moves on. So in other words, um, it's, a, it's a more of a, they're not scared. I, I, I want to keep an open door policy yep. uh, so that they can talk and, and share what their problems are and so forth. So for the most part, uh, they're very trustworthy. Their, their integrity is amazing. Um, I will put my job at first uh, in front of my own employees. Yeah. Well, that's why you're a great leader, Wayne, and you, you have so much success because you do those things mm -hmm. and you have that empathy for them. And they know that. Now, in 2015, you got honored in Salt Lake City, Utah, at the Real Estate Management Excellence uh, Association, right? Yes. Tell me what happened there. Well, that was uh, very surprising to me. This is the uh, inaugural for this particular award. And I was uh, nominated out of three other candidates. And Frankly, you know, th those were heavy hitters. And it's uh, international. Yes. So we had Canada, we had Japan, we also had New York, and myself. So we went to this, uh, this convention where it's kind of like, it was like the Grammy Awards, you know. So wow. you sat on this amazing thousand people inside there or more and yeah. 10 per table and so forth. And then, you know, the time for the award to be given out, and I remember this very... I remember it like it happened yesterday. They would announce, show you a picture, and announce who you are on the teleprompter, and and this is, and the winner is, and it came in dead silence, <laughs> dead silence. And I was, I had my eyes closed. I'm like, <laughs> I gotta bring this home. I gotta bring this home, please. You know, um, I heard a little chuckle. You know, and the, and the, the announcer, she, was, she said she had a little chuckle, and then she said. Aloha. <laughs> and I still didn't realize I won because I'm trying to figure out that's not my name, <laughs> you know. So anyway, we brought it home and brought it to the industry. And, you know, of course, we um, made, the, uh, made a bigger impact for our industry and culture that we do here in the state of Hawaii. Being very proud of that. It's not my award. It's the industry's award. Wow. That's, that's amazing, Dwayne. And then you got honored by the city council for that. And how did, how did you feel getting honored with them? Well, I, I, for, for, for me, I, I didn't feel uh, it was for me. I felt it was for the community and the industry. Yeah. But I didn't mind taking pictures and bringing the trophy home, you <laughs> yeah. know. But uh, yeah, it wasn't about me. Yeah, no, totally. And that's, again, you're very selfless. I mean, you always, that's a sign of a great leader because you want to give the credit to everybody. I mean, you're only as good as your team, right? Yes. Yeah, and Dwayne, and what I find fascinating is your brother Ron. He's also a general manager. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, my brother Ron, uh, we we do have different ideas, and um, my brother thinks he's gotten me the job at Oko <laughs> or now or or in the industry. Yes, he did. But he, I always remind him he got me the key. Yep. The door. <laughs> I had to open the door. He doesn't believe that. He's probably watching this and saying, that's not true. You know? <laughs> so uh, I thank you, Ron, wherever you are. Uh, <laughs> you gave me that lucky key. Thank you. Yeah, and he's, a, he's the general manager of 1350 Ala Moana, which is an amazing condo as well. Yeah, he's a, he's a great manager as well and a yeah, perfect fit for that building. They like him there. He's won numerous awards and involved in the organization too. And Dwayne, you know, out of everything that you do, I, I don't know how you do it all, but you were the president of the board of directors for many years for the Miss Hawaii USA pageant. Yeah. Tell me about that. That was uh, very interesting. I first I was offered the position, and I didn't want to take it because I didn't want the D word, you know, the drama. Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> but having three daughters, yep. I understood the challenges that women go through, and having a few female dog as well, yeah. and grandma used to live with us, yeah. and all female dominated, and I th thought the fishes I, I used to have were females too, so <laughs> I, I don't know. So, um, you know, 
I took an active stance with that, and I I left just recently. Yeah. Due to the health reasons, and I I think my four years, I did an impact for the women of the state of Hawaii. Yeah. Dwayne, it's amazing. I mean, I'm having fun talking with you today, but we're <laughs> going to take a quick break, and then yeah. when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond condos. Okay. You're watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Dwayne Komine. We will be back in a quick minute. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is the general manager of the very prestigious Hokua Condo, and he was honored in 2015 as the top condo general manager in the world. He is Dwayne Komine, and today we are going beyond condos. Dwayne, I know you read my book, and you, you like a bunch of stuff that's in there. What do you like about it so far? Well, honestly, um, Rusty, I read the book a couple of times, yep. and, and, more, and I, I shared with you earlier that when I was in the hospital, I read it a lot, yep. and it brought to my mind a certain subject, which is the four Ps, yeah. and I really, uh, I, I understood it as the, almost the way I read my building, and I really appreciate what you wrote about that, and, and how that, those four Ps, you know, makes a difference in, you know, bringing Surrounding yourself with the industry, the people, just the people that you work with. It's an amazing piece that you wrote. By the way, that book is awesome. Oh, thank you. You give me a ticklish feeling inside. I know of you right like there. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, when I, when I look at you and I see you at work, you know, with your team, I mean, it's, it's all about standards, you know, a standard of excellence. It's all about details. I mean, you're all about that, right, Dwayne? Yes, sir. Um, I'm about details. Details is very important. The small details, the, the service culture. I mean, kinala, meaning no mistake. Uh, we kind of run our operation that way, like a football team. You know, uh, one drops the ball, we lose the ball. Yeah. You know, so. No, and you can do 99 things right, and you do one wrong thing. Everyone's only going to remember that one wrong thing. Absolutely. So you can never do that one wrong thing. You know, sometimes I get complaints from res uh, people. I don't yep. want to say residents, but from people. <laughs> and, you know, like they come home in that two-minute engagement in the lobby, and, you know, the comment is, hey, never see anybody over here, or I never see just people, you know, doing whatever they're not supposed to be. But they judge a whole entire day on that two minutes. <laughs> two minutes they judge my, and I can tell you all what we did the last past 12 hours, yeah. you know, so. But it's a good thing. It's a learning experience, too. And what I like, too, is you train your team to expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. And you guys deal with emergencies, I mean, flawlessly. Yeah. I can't, I don't remember the count, but yes, you're correct. I believe it was about two or three people that we have saved their lives. Um, one had a heart attack uh, on the driveway on the street, hit another car. He was out. We brought him back to life. Just enough time for the ambulance to come. and. He came back, wow. uh, he came back to see us as well, and he had tattooed on his arm, 
our logo, remembering that you know this is the team. And just recently, I, my wife had bumped into another fellow uh, person that we saved. His brother said, you know, he wanted to, my wife wanted to thank me for allowing his brother to, to live. So they go to extensive training and classes and so forth. We won many top cop awards. Yeah. And in my book, Dwayne, I, I talk about the principle of welcoming adversity, looking forward to challenges. What's been your greatest adversity that you faced in your life? A uh, really good question. Adversity, uh, you know, you don't think about it, you know, adversity. And then when you think about it, the way I think about it now, my adversity was overcoming the information that I received or finding out that my wife had cancer, mm. which uh, frankly floored me. I didn't know how to react. I was lost. I was seeking help. I didn't know anything about cancer. And, but she was so resilient. I mean, she was strong as can be. I, could have, I wish I was a little bit more stronger for her, but I was pretty much taken back, and I needed help to run the ship because I couldn't think, because you, your loved one is, you know, has cancer. What do you do? You know, what's the next step? And how do you do about this? So big support from the, ten, the team, big support from the developers, as well as the ownership, family and friends. Yeah. No, I, I was with you during that time period. Yeah, and, I remember that. You know, I mean, we both cried together. Yeah. And it's so great now that Leona made a full recovery. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, she did. I remember when I was speaking with you, I was, I remember I, I didn't have to say anything. I just, you know, started and you, and you already felt. Oh, yeah. You know, so. No, it was, it was the feeling. And some months ago, Dwayne, um, I, I mean, adversity at that same level, if not more, yeah. with, with your experience for yourself. Yeah, so we were given obstacles throughout life and you know of course on November 19th uh, last year I will never forget that date uh, I was hospitalized I was found unconscious in my apartment and um, if I wasn't nobody found me I probably would never probably have woke, woken up found by my employees and some close friends of mine you know they immediately took me to the hospital not knowing what had happened to me, my wife in the mainland, so frankly, there was nobody there, you know. So I learned a lot about, you know, being alone and not knowing what to do. And, and you, know, you know, it's one of those tiny things in life that, what do you do? You yeah. know, and, but I learned what I had to do. I had liver complications, liver, uh, liver complications, meaning that, I had cirrhosis where your liver is um, damaged by alcohol. I didn't realize that I was a functioning alcoholic. I looked in the mirror one day and I, I realized I was a functioning alcoholic. And I take full responsibility for that. I take full responsibility. I look forward. I don't look backwards. I just want to make a change in my life. Since then, it's been about three months. It has changed my life drastically, and the way I think, the way I operate my offices, the way I operate my leadership with the team and the community it has changed my outlook. And uh, I have nothing but respect for my doctors that, that had a hard time diagnosing me. Yeah, and how, how long were you in the hospital for? I was in the hospital for nearly three weeks. I stayed at the Queens Medical Hospital. I stayed at three different wings. They transferred me to three different sites. I promised myself I would never, ever go back there again. Uh, the things that I went to, I came out on uh, November 19th. I have not had any urges to drink or have any alcohol of any sort. It's been 141 days I've been sober, and I feel great. That's so clarity. admirable. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I feel great. I um, only bad thing is that I get up really early in the morning, <laughs> <laughs> and I start work. But uh, the clarity is there, and you know, and the employees were very concerned too. One of my employees, uh, they knew what I was doing. I didn't realize that I was doing this, but you know, he, he took me to the side. He says, "We knew you drank a lot," and he said that, 
you know, we were going to talk to you. And he, they said, if you're not going to do it for yourself, can you do it for us, wow. the employees? And I looked at them and I, I looked at him and I said, wow, I didn't realize it expanded beyond family, but it, beyond, it went beyond my employees as well as their family, as well as the community. And so many other people that have, that know the story and, and what I went through. It's a wake-up call for many of them. Yeah, because you wake affected up. so many people that mm -hmm. you weren't really aware about how you affected them. Yeah. And frankly, uh, it's a disease that you either know you have it or you don't, and you can make a choice. And I made a choice. I, I made a really, a choice, like I said, I would never ever go back and to this day, I kept my word. I have no, like I said, the only thing I like now is, <laughs> I like popsicles. For some <laughs> <reason>. <laughs> Who doesn't like popsicles? Well, I never had popsicles too, and I like chocolates. Uh, I, I just recently was introduced to C's candy. They've been around for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I never knew that. I go to C's candy, and they have these big, um, you know, samples, and I feel bad because it's so big. I, I just want a small piece, you know. So. You're appreciating the, the simpler things in life. Huh? Yes, I, I see that and I see the details now. Yeah. I see a lot of details and um, my wife sees it as well. My friends see it and my, my voice has changed and my attitude changes, um, has changed. And, and, and you being in my life, yeah. I helped, you know, talking with you, you were one of my first guests I had that I allowed into my house because I was so used to having many people around me all the time. Yeah. And you saw me when I went to that function. I was there 10 minutes and yep. I was gone and I yep. went home because I didn't want to be in that environment. And most people don't come back, but you called. Yeah. And so you called and you came over and I told you the whole story and you got a better idea. Wow. It's, you know. No, it's, it's impactful. And Dwayne, your story is going to inspire so many people, um, you know, to think about their situation and maybe a similar situation that that you know they could re really relate with mm -hmm. to you and I mean, before we wrap up i want to ask you one more thing what's an important lesson you've learned in your life so far <laughs> important lesson um that's a good question i guess my lesson would probably be i want to be better than i am but you know, it's how to get to that level yep. uh, where I pretty much won a lot of awards. I know I did. Yep. There's actually a ruling that you only can win one every five years. They made it for me, <laughs> and I think it's unfair. But <laughs> if you're good, you should be able to win every year. Yeah. You know, like restaurants, they win every year. You yeah, know? If you're the but, best, you're the best, right? But I got a ruling. You can't win every, <laughs> every five years. So I hope I'm going in the right direction. But. No, that's good. And Dwayne, I, I mean, it's so great having you, you know, not just on the show today, but here in life, Dwayne. You know, thank, thank you. you for sharing what thank you did. You. Number 47. Number 47. <laughs> and thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKamori.com. And my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that Dwayne and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.